Schön, dass du wieder eingeschaltet hast zu einer neuen Episode bei Heiter für Sonic mit mir, Nadine. Und heute sprechen wir über etwas, was für Kinder und auch für uns, als wir Kinder waren, so selbstverständlich war. Nur leider haben die meisten von uns diese Anbindung verloren. Galileo Galilei sagte mal, man kann einem Menschen nichts beibringen. Man kann ihm nur helfen, es in sich wiederzuentdecken. Deswegen habe ich heute keine geringere als die weltweit bekannteste Engelflüsterin Lorna Byrne als Interviewpartnerin bei Heiter für Sonic. Lorna Byrne ist eine internationale und Sunday Times Number One Bestseller Autorin. Sie wurde 2019 vom Watkins Mind Body Magazine als eine der 100 spirituell einflussreichsten lebenden Menschen der Welt ausgezeichnet. Sie ist Philanthropin und Gründerin zweier wundervoller Stiftungen, die ich in den Shownotes hier verlinken werde. Und es wäre großartig, wenn ihr sie darin unterstützen könnt. Eines davon ist eine Kinderstiftung mit Projekten in Äthiopien, Jordanien, Syrien und auch in Irland, in denen traumatisierte Kinder unterstützt werden. Und von der anderen Stiftung wird sie hier im Interview auch berichten. Ihre Lebensaufgabe ist es, die Menschen daran zu erinnern, dass jeder von ihnen einen Schutzengel hat. Wir hatten so ein schönes Gespräch und ich wünsche dir jetzt ganz, ganz viel Freude mit diesem inspirierenden Interview. Dear Lana, I cannot say how much I am looking forward to this interview. And when I read your books... Your most famous book is Angels in My Hair. I know that too. I was very touched and um, cried a lot. <laughs> The last days I cried a lot because I've read these books. And there were so many moments in your book that touched my heart. And I am so grateful to you for that. And yeah, you are the world's famous angel whisperer, <laughs> I would say. And your life's task is to remind people that each of them has a guardian angel, right? Yes. Yeah. Even as a child, you were able to perceive, see and communicate with angels. How was it for you? And did you tell those around you about it? Um, I, I love the question and the, the way you put it. Um, even today, um, I see the angels every single day and I, I would see, you know, souls of loved ones and so many other things as well. Um, it's just normal for me. I don't know what it's really like for you and, and you don't mm -hmm. because I can't see any reason why you can't. Mm. I, I don't understand that that part. And, you know, when I was a child, a teenager, even an adult, um, I was told to keep it a secret, not to say, not to say anything. And, and the first time the angels said that was when I was only maybe two or two and a half, remember? I seemingly, I didn't start to talk um, to, you know, To my parents are that until I was almost that age but I was communicating with the angels but it was a time I was um, sitting in front of the fire with my little brother mm. and we were playing with the blocks I know you know the story in angels in my hair and just our hands touched you know like his went into mine and mine went into his and there was such sparkle And so much love. And it was then that the angels had told me I must keep it a secret um, and that my little brother had died before I was born. But I still always, um, what would you say, even today, he's, he's my big brother, <laughs> you know, in that, in, that, in that way. And it was from that moment on they had said that they were angels and I must keep it a secret and mm. say and say nothing and that's what I have done all my life until Angels in My Hair came out and, and that book took four years to do like you know it does take time to write a book well I find it because I'm severely dyslexic mm -hmm. so it's um it's it's hard even though technology is good but it's not good enough I wish it was. <laughs> mm -hmm. hmm. 
And why is Art, uh, Archangel Michael speaking to you especially? Does it have a reason? Um, I never asked Archangel Michael that question. You know, <laughs> is there any special reason why he has, you know, spoken to me so much, why he has been involved in my life so much, and why it's mostly himself that God would send you know, to bring a message. Um, but I've met, met many other archangels as well. I've mm -hmm. never, I haven't mentioned them all. There's, there's so much that goes on. Um, I must ask him that, not, I'll ask him that question one day, but mm -hmm. I can never guarantee that um, it will be answered. You know, sometimes, even as a child, I would have asked, them something and you know years later I might get the answer years later they might remind me I had asked that question and we're telling you now and um, so to me it's always in God's hands you know like even the work you're doing mm. like you're being guided and you're being helped you know in in every way and I just think it's so important especially nowadays for everyone to realize that you know you're not just a human being flesh and blood that you are a spiritual being as well you have that soul you know that spark of light of god and that you have a guardian angel um, and and you may call your guardian angel by different names all over the world you know, but this guardian angel never leaves you for one second. Other angels, even the souls of loved ones, um, come and go. Even even friends come and go. Family come comes and goes. But your guardian angel is always there. Even if you think it's not there, it's there. Hmm. How do guardian angels help us? Oh, that's a lovely question. They help us in every single way. Um. I kind of, at this stage in my life, what would I say? I don't think I would be where I am today only for, you know, the help of the angels and my guardian angel and, and God, you know, making me so, so connected. You know, as, as I said, it's, it's, um, it's normal and natural for me, hmm. like, your angel, your guardian angel, and even your guardian angel at times, you know, will ask in another angel to help, or even sometimes the soul of a loved one, because sometimes you listen to the soul of a loved one more than you would to your guardian mm. angel, you know, or any other angel. <laughs> um, and I do think that is so funny, you know, in that in that way. Um, just your guardian angel is there and it's prompting you all the time. You know, mm -hmm. just say you were sitting at home today, like yourself, I'll use yourself as an example. Um, I know the angels must have prompted you or someone else to mention mm -hmm. and the thought crossed your mind or someone or across someone else's mind and they said it to you. Mm -hmm. You know, so they're there. They're, they're like the links, mm -hmm. and it is, in a sense, if the more we respond to those links, the more we listen and we respond and we're not, what would you say, so afraid or, or nervous or think someone will think I'm silly, you know, it's like even someone saying to themselves, I have this dream to climb, you know, some particular mountain or to go on a, you know, a horse riding trip or you know some some something unusual and it just keeps on crossing your mind I would say to you save up for it and go <laughs> you know do it that way because they're they're putting things into your your mind all of the time and sometimes you know that can be a gut feeling you have or or it can be a, a matter of fact you know it's a matter of fact, but you still have to go down that road. People would often say to me, I, I had this feeling, this knowing of, you know, 
a particular thing and they tell you what it is is going to happen, but they sit at home and years later, they're still waiting for it to happen. But you, you have to, just like you and, and what you're doing, you have to get up and do it. And yes. I think some of us just fall into the trap that we think um, God and the angels will just pick us up and put us there. But we're spiritual beings, but we're human beings as well. So we have to, you know, we have to work. I have to work. God didn't make it easy for me at all, you know. <laughs> um, and sometimes I would give out about that. Mm -hmm. So whatever way your angel works with you, you know, um, just kind of say to yourself, you've nothing to lose, mm. you know, and, and give it a go. Like, I know some people would think, you know, well, I'm being guided in this way, so I have to be extremely successful, but it mightn't be that. It might be just for you to have the experience of that, of knowing how to do, because you're actually going somewhere else, but you will need part of that. Mm. You know, when you think of it, you know, I can't read or write. I can read a little bit now, but even giving me directions, you haven't got a hope, you know, in that, in that way. But... But when the angels, when God gives me directions, grant you, I do find it, find it easier. But when I say it to somebody, you know, this is what has to happen. This is what we have to do. They kind of just look at me and say, that's a big request. And I say, no, this is what we have to do. Like, so it, 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 we have to take those steps. We have to work at it. Hmm. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. Um... Do other people's guardian angels sometimes tell you something? Um, on, on occasions, yes, if I was personally with someone, you know, um, sometimes they will do that. And, and on occasions when somebody would uh, appear on the screen, you know, the way you'd see the people as well, and they'd ask me a question, sometimes they would answer it. Mm -hmm. um, and I would hear it, which is amazing. Um, so that happens on, on occasions, but what would I say? Um, how can I say this? You know, sometimes, you know, someone's guardian angel can tell me someone's life all in one go, mm. all in one word. But that doesn't mean I share it with that person because their life is personal to them. You know, um, and I always feel no the angels just told me that just allowed me and I would feel so much love and compassion and hope for them and everything like that. But I wouldn't go and, and tell them, by the way, I know this happened to you or this happened to you or whatever, mm -hmm. because it's someone's personal life. That's one thing that God and the angels have taught me, mm. you know, not to hurt anyone. We're just telling you just so you know, mm -hmm. You know, mm, interesting. And I always ask it myself one question, and it's a little bit weird <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> because you said um, angels are always around us. And when I have sex, I, I is it everyone watching? <laughs> is your guardian angel right there with you? Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes. Uh, interesting. <laughs> Yes, your guardian angel. But he, he does this, or he's looking. They they <laughs> see us. They don't see us in the way we see okay. ourselves. It's different. They see us as so beautiful and 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 so incredible, and mm -hmm. they love us unconditionally. Mm. Like you know, again, that's the human part of us. Yes, like your guardian <laughs> angel is. Even with you when you're in the bathroom, if, if you happen to be vomiting, your guardian angel is mm -hmm. there, but it doesn't look on that as the way we would. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> it just has so much of that unconditional love for you. Mm. I know it would be there with its arms around you. Mm. You know, so um, don't worry about that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> What was your most touching encounter with an angel? 
Oh, I can't give you any one particular mm-hmm. at all um, because there has been so many, mm. you know, um, like one that is, is written in Angels in My Hair was, you know, Archangel Michael walking around the college in Maynooth with me, mm. you know, and the two priests that walked towards us you know, they said hello, Father, to him, to Archangel Michael. And it was like as if I was the invisible one, but they saw him. Mm-hmm. You know, there there has been so many, like even Angel Hosis, you know, just appearing at the end of the road to walk with me and talk to me about something that is going on or happening. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Angel Jimison, um, that incredible angel, you know, the gatekeeper of the earth that's doing its best to help us. Mm. Um, you know, every encounter when, when, what would I say? How can I put it this way? When it's the particular angels, that's the mm-hmm. way I will put it. Not the angels that just come and, you know, saying hello and passing by or, or even the, the souls. Mm-hmm. that 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 come um there has just just been been so so many and you know even angel amen like an, an incredible angel as well i am still this to this day in what do they call it the word a we or so, they call it something you mm-hmm. know um i'm still I'm still taken back, you know, why, why me? Why not you? Mm. Why isn't millions of of people in the world, you know, now seeing angels as physically as I see them, as you're seeing me and I'm seeing you. Yes. In that, in that way. But I know more and more people are becoming open spiritually Mm. You know, they're being coming, what would you say, conscious of the positive thoughts that have been put into their mind or even the pictures that have been put in there, you mm-hmm. know, and they're recognizing, what would you say, I know we have this um, virus at the moment, but, and I know that has really been hard for people. Um, and I know so many families that have lost loved ones of all ages. Um, But in one way, it has helped us to open a bit more. Not all of us, but a lot of us. Mm. It's helped us to, you know, recognize the important things in life. Mm. You know, that it's not all about material things and not all about, in one sense, to be able to do what you want you have to care and look at if you do that, what's the consequences, mm. you know, and, and people just enjoying nature, like here at my house, you know, we have a lane out there and mm. no cars go up or down or anything, but, you know, even the school bring children for walks on it and everything like that. And you're just seeing families now more so than ever before, stopping and looking at the flowers or the blossoms on the trees or, you know, the bee, all of these things and and saying hello and getting to know each other, getting to know neighbors, but keeping their distance. Yeah, wow. Yeah, that's so important. So it's also a present for me like corona is a present for many people when you see it after maybe yeah um the year before last i was with a retreat group on iceland and on all icelandic residents believe in elves and trolls and they say that the rocks that come from the volcano are um, elfen houses it's very very sweet and there are a lot of rocks in iceland by the way and this is exactly why rocks are not allowed to to be blown up and houses um, are built around the rocks 
and it looks spectacular. And also here in Frankfurt, I have a little park here next to me, five minutes from me. And this is a very special park and with water inside in the middle and with a, um, yeah, with a little um, small castle. And there, there are also some elves. But most of the people are always asking me who can see them. There are not that many because it's, I think it's normal if you are a child, a small child, that you connect with them. Yes, I think um, children connect spiritually. I have watched children, um, what would you say, play with the energy from the plant, mm. you know, and, you know, and they're just doing it naturally and then they just run off. But just the world changes them because we tell children if, if something is not solid, it's not real mm. in, that, in that way. And I think that story in Iceland is absolutely beautiful that they build around the stones. And mm. um, I think that's, that's incredible because we shouldn't be blowing up anything of our planet. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. we shouldn't be doing, doing that. I'm afraid I've never seen an elf. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But, um, if they exist, they're they're there, you know. And it's just something I've never never seen. You know, I've seen many many things, but never that. But I I imagine then those stones have a, a sacred spiritual connection, just like the place you said in France. Mm -hmm. You know, when you go into that park, you know, places become and even after centuries or thousands of years, we mightn't know, you know, that it was once long ago, mm. you know, and yet we're drawn towards it. Yes. You yes. know, just like your park, the park yes. in France there that, that you Frankfurt, were talking yes. about. Frankfurt, yes. Frankfurt, yes. that you were talking yes. about, you know, and the water and the stones mm. that are, are there. And again, it's kind of, you know, I don't know. I, I wouldn't like to say go over and touch the stones because they can wear mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. you know? So you don't want that either. But but maybe you can go over and allow yourself to take a few steps towards them and feel the energy and step back and feel the energy change. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and, and ask your guardian angel to help you just to connect spiritually to whatever it yes. is a nature that that you need to yes yes i have a very deep connection to archangel um gabriel gabriel oh I yes love yes gabriel. <laughs> and i have seen him sometimes and it was very it was so special it was spectacular and um if i go inside i could cry and I miss it to to see him, to connect with him. And it's like, it's a cut. And I don't know um, how I can connect again. Because sometimes I'm asking about, hey, how, where are you? And it's, well, I'm, I'm sure he's there when you call on him. Just like mm -hmm. all archangels there. They can't just be with you. They're mm -hmm. with millions of people at the same time, which to me is... I have no answer to that. That's incredible. Um, but just talk to him. Archangel Gabriel is um, a fantastic angel. Yeah. I, 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 what would you say? I know I have written in the books, um, you know, most of the time he is dressed like a biker when he comes to visit myself, <laughs> you know. Um, and, and I love that. I love all the leather gear and I, I love the way he, he does it. But he did show himself in his glory as well, you know, completely different. And I was just saying, I would never recognize him like that. So whatever way he gives you a visualization of himself, you know, just keep that in your mind and, and mm. allow yourself to see it, you know, and, and maybe you could try ask him for a sign. Mm. Yeah. You know, um, ask him in that way. But remember, he comes and goes. And it's again, it's your guardian angel that allows him in and around you. And it's really only for 
a split second, but we ourselves humanly could think of us for the whole day or the whole week mm -hmm. or, you know, that way, mm -hmm. um, which again is just time and space is just so, so different. Mm. Yeah, I, I ask it a lot, my uh, community, what, um, what kind of questions do you have about Lorna? And uh, the most frequently asked question was, how can I see angels and how I contact them? Well, I, the first thing I would say, say to everyone, um, well, I know reading the book Angels in My Hair will help. That'll, that's the start because I hear from people all over the world just saying that, you know, that yes. message is coming back. But I, I think for themselves is the first thing to, to do is, you know, acknowledge that they have a guardian angel, mm -hmm. you know, put all your disbeliefs away, you know, because you have nothing to lose, only to gain. Mm -hmm. And ask for a sign. Mm -hmm. you know something simple don't ask to win the lotto or you know to become a millionaire you know <laughs> in that in that way but ask for a sign and the most common sign that people ask for is a feather it seems to be the easiest thing you have to remember an angel is a spiritual being as well mm. you know so it's not flesh and blood like us They can't pick up the flower and give it to you or the feather, but they do have ways of helping a feather to get to a place that you will say, oh, how did that feather get there? Hmm. Hmm. That's so in, that, in that way, I've heard so many stories, you know, you know, from men and women saying they asked for the sign of a feather and months passed and they said it wasn't coming. But I kept asking, I kept mm -hmm. saying, oh, don't forget, I, you know, it would just cross their mind. Mm -hmm. and, and I always remember on umpteen occasions, people telling me this, they'd open a drawer or they'd open their whole door and walk in and the first time in their life to ever see a feather in their house. Now, it's not if you're walking down the road and there's loads of birds there <laughs> and all those feathers, no. <laughs> you know, but yes, feathers, feathers is one of the most common things that the mm -hmm. angels find. I'd have to say the, and it can be any color, the feather, because it depends on the part of the world you're in. Yes. Well, and um, sometimes people ask for a flower, but they usually ask for a bunch of flowers. But that's not so easy mm -hmm. either, because your guardian angel, you know, has to pass the message on to someone that you know. Their guardian angel has to be, you know, putting the thought into their mind. But a lot of the time we ignore those thoughts. Mm -hmm. It could be, you know, someone could have asked for a sign of a phone call from from John or Mary or my auntie or whatever. And the thought is going through your mind, but you're mm -hmm. ignoring it. So you never make it. So the person never gets that message. They never get that mm. sign. Yes. Um, but another good one about the flower is, you know, um, children are very good at listening to their guardian angel. They would often just pull a tiny little wildflower and go over to a stranger and hand it to them and run away. Mm. I have seen it happen loads of times where I have seen a child do this, mm -hmm. stranger take it, look at it, smile at the child, walk off and then throw it away. Mm. They don't realize their guardian angel can't give them a big bouquet of flowers. It's not working. Mm -hmm. But a flower from a child. <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. Childs are so connected. They, they, they are. So just, um, just ask your guardian angel for a sign. And every day, like I have done some webinars and that. And one of the things I would say, you know, in the morning when you wake, say good morning to your guardian angel. Say mm. good morning to your soul. Oh, you know, yes. um, ask for the help during the day. You know, help me today if I have difficulty. 
you know, make it as less difficulty, as less as possible, you know, and remind me to enjoy the sunshine, the good things, the blessings that are in my life. Yes. You know, um, some people in, in a sense, when, when they, I think they have a huge expectation, if I'm saying that word right, Mm -hmm. about what their guardian angel should be able to do for them mm. but they do a huge amount for you but you have to it's like me I have to pick up the glass you know you have to do that your guardian angel can't do that part yes yes you know, so yes. If, if you get a thought into your mind to get up and go out for a walk this evening get up and go out for the walk don't say to your guardian angel well, I went for the walk, but nothing happened. I was searching for something to happen, but nothing happened. You were to go for the walk and enjoy it. It doesn't mean that there's the kind of message or the expectation you have. Mm -hmm. They're teaching you to respond so that when something really important comes up, you respond straight away and you say, you did it. You'd forgotten all about your guardian angel, mm -hmm. but your guardian angel is so happy for you. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, I have also a community question for you. Are angels independent beings or are they dead souls? Uh, not really dead souls, you know, um, souls of my dead ancestors. Um, I, that's a lovely question. Um, angels are creatures that were created by God long, long ago. And I always re remember being asked that question first and having to say that. And I've been told you must say it exactly like that. So that's that part of the mm -hmm. question answered. Um, your, your da or soul of a loved one can never be a guardian angel. They are more than any angel ever could be because your soul is that spark of light of God. It's mm -hmm. billions of times more. We, in a sense put angels on pedestals, but the angels have us on a higher pedestal. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I okay. Answer it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and next community question. Do angels draw attention to themselves with numbers? For your understanding, you look at the clock um, and it is 1.11 a.m. Well, it depends on what the person means, really. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there could be a reason that your guardian angel is is giving you um, a, a particular number. And over the years, it appears out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. um, and usually later on, it's something to do with something that is going to happen in the future. And you recognize it mm -hmm. and you know what to do. But it's not that they're constantly giving you numbers. Okay. See, it, it really depends on what that person person means. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like you know, um, I don't have an example offhand, a simple one. Um, no, I don't have a simple one. That's offhand, fine. So that's fine. I have another question for you. <laughs> um, what did the angels teach you about the origin and true potential of love? Oh, wow. Um, is, is the person talking about love? Mm -hmm. Or are they talking about a category of love, like romantic love, love of family, love of... Or are they talking about overall love? Mm -hmm. It's more this unconditional love, I oh, mean. Unconditional love. Mm. Um, I wish that every human being would allow their soul to come forward another little bit, you know, that spark of light of God, because your soul is love. Mm. So you never run short of it at all. No matter how much of your love you give to someone else, you never run short and you can never give it all away or you can never lock it all away. And none of us have ever locked it all away. So we do love ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that's very important. But because of things that 
happen to us in life, we lock love away because we say to ourselves, we don't want to get hurt. Yes. But part of love is getting hurt. Mm -hmm. it's, it's that emotion that makes us cry. You know, the hurt of a, a relationship breaking up. You know, um, the hurt of, of losing someone, even the hurt of, you know, not getting that promotion in that way, we're inclined to lock, we're, we're not letting any more love out, mm. you know, and one thing I always say to, to everyone, if you could love yourself a little bit more, stop locking it away, mm -hmm. um, then you can love everything in your life much, much more. You can mm -hmm. enjoy more, you can be happier more, you can, you would have less anxiety, less worry, because you're allowing your soul to come forward. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. allowing your soul to come forward, um, that would be the most incredible thing that each and every one of us do, allowing mm -hmm. that intertwining. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. What happens when people leave their physical body and die? Another lovely question. Um, <laughs> well, we're, we're meant to live this life and we're meant to live it to the fullest we possibly can and, and to enjoy as much of it as possible. You know, we know that it'll be a mixture. Um, but when our time comes and sometimes someone's life is, is shorter than someone else's or, or sometimes someone dies in a tragedy, you know, and, and then that then becomes their time. If, if mm -hmm. you understand, mm -hmm. and we find all that very hard to cope with, but you have to remember they have a guardian angel. And at the moment of death, or sometimes even beforehand, um, the angel already has hold of your soul, mm. you know, and takes you straight to heaven. Mm. And your guardian angel is with you in heaven, even though it doesn't stay with you every second there, but it's your guardian angel. And it can never be the guardian angel of any other soul. Mm -hmm. mm. So, so I wonderful. hope that answers. I, I yeah. try to keep the answers as short as I can. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's wonderful. And do the guardian angels have names? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what would you say? You know, if you don't know your guardian angel's name, all that you have to do is ask. They'll give you a portion of it, not all of it. And it mightn't be a name that you know of as the word name. Mm -hmm. You know, I have I have a children's book out there. And like over the years, I would ask children, you know, do they know their guardian angel's name? And they, they might be with their parents. They have come to a talk mm -hmm. and the parents would, you know, well, they don't know, Lorna, please, can you tell them? And. I would ask the child, do you know your guardian angels? And the child would look at me, of course I do. <laughs> and and the sweet. parent would be, you know, like, you know, Aww. astonished. And, and sometimes a, a child would say it's grasshopper, you know. Um, <laughs> okay. child, and, and I put the names in the, in the books for mm -hmm. the stories because they're based on things the children would have told me of their guardian angel. Um, another little boy had said, well, my guardian angel is swift, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, you know, buttons, <laughs> kiwi, you know, so, so don't, and, and sometimes it can be Mary John, it can be okay. a name that you're familiar with. Yes, so, okay, but it's, both. It's part of the name. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because all this I can say about a guardian angel's name, it's so long. I have been shown letters in the human form and it's like it goes on forever <laughs> you know <laughs> okay so it's only a tiny section mm -hmm. it's like you know one time in the audience and um, I, I don't know where I was but there was a man up at the back 
of the audience and it was question time mm -hmm. and and he said Lorna I've been asking my guardian angel for years and years and years for its name and I just get no all the time no no name whatsoever here I was <laughs> looking at him I was nearly laughing but I said no I won't and I said to him but your guardian angel has been giving you the name all the time you just didn't recognize it guardian angel's name was no oh <laughs> <laughs> That's why he kept getting no. Kept, okay. Yeah, no. Yes. Okay. So yeah. It, no, it's, it's also a name. Yeah, you know, um, it, so, and, and, and then it could be a word that you can't quite pronounce. Mm -hmm. But I always say, if it's that, write it down the way you think you, you can spell it. Mm -hmm. And over time, you will actually start to say it correctly. Mm. And you will notice yourself. Wow, two years ago I used to say it that way, but I'm actually saying it this way now. Mm. You're 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 hearing your guardian angel repeating it to mm -hmm. you. Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a really good one. What moved me a lot was your experience of the um, oh, it's an a uh, very special English word, crucifixion. <laughs> crucifixion of jesus you know what oh, i mean yes yeah. yeah i have a very strong connection and response to jesus and why did jesus give his life in your eyes in your experience well i suppose it's it's something i have to write more on because he oh yes <laughs> he, he loves us you know Mm -hmm. He's letting us know, um, I love you and everything is okay. Mm. Like he, he rose from the dead. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, you have life mm -hmm. and, you, and, and you go to heaven and he's given you a guardian angel. Um, like Jesus is God. I, I remember... Jesus is Ali, you know, I, I, we call God by so many names and always remember I was so worried and concerned and, and one day I was talking to God and, you know, I said, but what am I to call you? Because I was so conflicted, mm -hmm. you know, should I call you Jesus? Or, you know, people call God, call you so many different names. And God just said to me, Lorna, what do you call me? And I just said, God, <laughs> <laughs> and he said, call me God, because it's universal. Mm -hmm. Everyone understands mm -hmm. what you're talking about. Yes. You know, so I, I think that that is beautiful. Um, but God is real. And, and that's what I am telling the world. Mm -hmm. You know, God is real. And and you have a soul, that spark of light of God. And it's only your human body that dies. You actually live because of that. Mm. And you have a guardian angel. And if we allow that intertwining of the body and soul, then you won't die. Mm. You know, That's your body true. and soul. Your, it's, I know it changes, but it doesn't get sick anymore. You, you see all that I see even more probably. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I think we're on a journey. The world is fighting to get closer to that because lots of people are saying, regardless of religion or what they believe or not, mm. they're, they're saying there has to be more to life. You know, and lots of people are experiencing um, spiritual things within their life. You know, sometimes they, they can't explain it. Mm -hmm. You know, something happens or... Or something turns up and, you know, there's no answer to it. Mm. And, and that's happening. Millions of people around the world today and, and more and more people have been given, you know, near death experiences yes. to show us that, that, that you don't die. It's only the physical body that dies. Um, but you're meant to live life. And to me, that's very important to rem remind you of that. You're, you're here for not just one purpose. I'd hate that word, by the way, purpose. <laughs> so many people use it. Yes. For millions of purposes. 
mm-hmm. you know, millions of destinies, all yes. those words that, that we use that we kind of have been taught to focus on that there's only one, but there is so many. Yes. You know, so true. And, and they're happening every single day yes. of your life, you know, um, and I even forget now what the question was. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. It was about Jesus. And uh, why did Jesus give his life? He gave his life for all of us. Mm. And that means all of us. It mm. doesn't mean just a particular few or, or a particular um, chosen. He's given it for all of us. Mm. You know, I, I just say we focus on the Old Testament an awful lot. I know I've written about that and I call it... Yeah. You know, that was God then, the old God, but it is God. But Jesus is the new God in, in that sense, you know, mm. but Jesus is God, you know, and in all different religions, we call God by different names. Yes. But it's, it's the one and the same, mm-hmm. you know, um, and, and even those that would say they don't believe in God, I find that they are very spiritual people themselves. They're mm-hmm. very, very connected. And I think that happens because religion, in a sense, has, you know, people nowadays are more educated, you know, we're, we're not so controlled. Mm-hmm. So when we discover the harm and and the terrible things that religion has done in all religions across the board, not just Catholic religion, Mm -hmm. um, that has kind of, what would you say, made people say, no, I don't believe in God in that way, but it's really, Mm -hmm. they mean they don't believe in the institution Mm -hmm. of Mm -hmm. that particular religion. They stand away Mm -hmm. because they believe in God, they would say it to me, you know, personally themselves, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. that, that they do. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, I think that is, that is wonderful. I think everyone discovers God in their mm-hmm. life at different times. That's, they have that spiritual experience, mm-hmm. you know, it was like the person on the, the mountaintop and trying to find the way they couldn't see. Mm-hmm. And, they all the time kept feeling a bar along the way they were going so they wouldn't fall. But there was never any bar there. Mm. And that mm. was a cliff, if you know mm-hmm. what I mean. There was mm-hmm. never any anything there. Yeah. Um, so there's millions of people out there, men, women and children, that have spiritual experiences all of the time. Mm. Yes, for sure. But they don't know it. Mm. Maybe. Sometimes they, they don't know it, but I think a lot of people are acknowledging within themselves mm. that it is, mm-hmm. you know, they're Could not be. so much in denial as they were in the past, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, and love is the most powerful thing. You know, if you're a spiritual person, yeah. you, you have to love unconditionally. You can't, you can't judge You can't, you know, what would you say, hate. Mm. You can't hate another person. Mm -hmm. You can't look for revenge revenge against others Mm. or against nature. Yes. Love has to be unconditional in that that way. And I I think that's the difficult part we have, you know, because, you know, our history has Mm -hmm. so many horrible things that have happened in the past. And we have kind of allowed that hatred, mm-hmm. and hurting, revenge and mm-hmm. anger to be carried on when mm-hmm. it shouldn't be. It should be forgiven. Mm-hmm. And let's not let it happen again. Mm-hmm. And let's reach out to each other in love. Imagine what the world would be like. Mm-hmm. It would yeah. be so different. That's true. It will. Yeah. At the end of all your lectures... You bless the people. And what happens there? Well, um, I always say, and I can do it for you now as well. I always say the prayer Archangel Michael gave Mm. me. So I Mm. I will do that. And then I do a blessing after. Um, 
if I was traveling, I would bless each person individual, but I can't tell you. Mm -hmm. God hasn't allowed, allowed that. But what I can do after I say this prayer, I can just ask whoever is listening, you know, to close their eyes for a moment and I'll do it in silence and it'll only take a few seconds. Oh, sure. Yeah. Now? Okay. Yeah, yes. I'll do, do it now. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to say the Archangel Michael prayer first for, for everyone. Prayer of thy healing angels that's carried from God by the Archangel Michael. Pour out thy healing angels, thy heavenly host, upon everyone that will be listening. Let them feel the beam of thy healing angels upon them, the light of your healing hand. Let the healing begin, whatever way God grants. God bless us all. Amen. And now I will just do the blessing. And it'll only take a few seconds. Close your eyes if you want. Um, and just know that you'll be in the presence of God. But that's all I can say. So I'm going to do it now. I will raise my hands. God bless you all. Okay. Mm. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> mm. Wow. Oh, I have um, two last questions, I think. Okay. Mm. You can see the energy of fruits, of cans, of boxes, etc. Anything that can be touched, actually. How do you perceive the energy? How does a high vibrating energy differ from a low vibrating energy? I don't quite get the word you're saying before energy. Yes. How is it the difference between higher energy and lower energy? Um, I, I love that. I actually don't see any difference ah. in that mm -hmm. sense, mm -hmm. in, that, in that way. To me, All energy is just is just different. It depends on what it's coming from. So it depends really on what that person means mm -hmm. in that in that way. Like, you know, you could you could have like we were talking about stones earlier on. You could yes. have a small stone and you could have a bigger stone. But just because the stone is bigger it won't mean in a sense that it's a higher energy. It's just a different energy than the smaller stone. Mm -hmm. it'll feel different mm -hmm. it'll touch you different in that way and just like the energy coming up from the earth mm -hmm. you know as you're walking and your energy yourself your energy changes mm -hmm. on everything you do as well mm -hmm. so I would never I know lots of people put it that way they might say they go into a place and they find oh the energy is very high here it's all jumpy and everything mm -hmm. in that in that way but that depends on what's going on in there you know mm -hmm. if there's a big party on and lots of people it's all their energy mm -hmm. and the energy of everything that is all around them mm -hmm. as well and all that you have to do is, is say to yourself okay that's okay I can feel it I don't need to feel it all the time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Um, I know from your books, and you also told it, that you must never tell everything that the angels tell you. Is there something happening today that the angels have allowed you to tell us brand new? <laughs> That's a lovely question. Um, what would I say there? Well, yes, <laughs> I, 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 I suppose maybe something within my life mm -hmm. in that sense, because what's in my life is for everyone. Mm -hmm. And that is that we have the sanctuary here in Ireland. And I know we need lots of help with it. But 
God has said and the angels have said like that it'll still be here in 300 years time mm -hmm. you know um, and again it's what what way can I say it it's it's a gift because I don't have money so it was a gift someone listened you know so God helped this to happen and the angels like one thing God has always said to me, many are called and few are chosen, Lorna, but very few will say yes. So I'm hoping and praying mm -hmm. to God and telling him to pester those that would have means mm -hmm. um, to keep on pestering them and, you know, for them to say yes, because we need an awful lot of, of help. But this sanctuary here in Ireland is not just for me. Mm. it's for the future it's it belongs to the world yes you know and and it will continue and please god i'll be able to help to teach people to to grow more spiritually but again to connect back to to nature to the earth because that's where the angels taught me everything mm -hmm. like i have met people that never even saw a worm didn't mm -hmm. even know what a worm was or or a thorn on a rose rose bush. Mm -hmm. You know, I've had them here in Ireland. You know, there there is so much that each of us take for granted in our life and we think everybody else knows that, mm -hmm. but they don't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so I have to see what way the sanctuary is going to grow, whatever, mm -hmm. and I know it'll grow whatever way God wants it to. And and maybe when it's up and running, you will bring a, a crowd of, of men yeah. women over of it doesn't matter what age. Um, and we can learn lots. I know I won't be doing everything. Mm -hmm. Others will be helping as well. Sure. Um, but there is so much I can, so much more I could tell. Mm -hmm. So much more that... Um, I can teach and and help you because mm -hmm. to me it's is to help each individual to open spiritually. It's not just for certain people, it's for yes. everyone. Yes. You know? yes. And Wonderful. So let's let's I would love everyone to pray for that, that those that have means will say yes, because we have to build accommodation we can't have yeah. to run over and sorry you have to sleep in the field in that in that way but um i have been told so much about about this gift that god has given mm. you know and yet i can't share it all you know yes. but i do hope to do a video if maybe the weekend is fine i do a video on my phone it won't be perfect yeah and I'd walk around and show some of the things of, mm -hmm. of this beautiful place. Mm -hmm. um, and we're growing our own food and there's there's nature, there's all kinds of wildlife and everything mm -hmm. like that. To me, I'm blown away. Mm -hmm. Like It's a wonderful place. God showed me this when I was a child, but I didn't understand. Mm -hmm. So it's a long, a long story. But on the other thing, you know, we all can work together. Mm -hmm. I, I believe we all can reach out to each other and help each other and get through this crisis that we're in. Yes. And I know we can make this world, because I have written about a little bit mm -hmm. about it, like a glimpse of heaven. Mm -hmm. And it could be starting here in Ireland, for all I mm -hmm. know. So all as I know is lots of people will come from all over the world and even children mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. you know, so everything is in god's hands and yes. the angels are there to to help us and to inspire us and to help us to listen mm -hmm. you know um, and as god has said many are called few are chosen and very few of those few say yes yeah you know which is I to say to God is disappointing, mm -hmm. but I have to thank God for the person who said yes and gave it as a gift. Mm. 
like that's just think about it that's a really you know unbelievable it is hmm. I'm done with all my questions. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. You're so interesting. Welcome. And, and I hope um, your audience will enjoy. Mm, I'm sure. <laughs> I, I hope, I yes. hope they do. And I hope, um, you know, they will continue because you were saying you're a coach mm -hmm. and, and the meditation, all of what you teach, that's all part of, helping all of this to happen yes you know for That's us all true. to come together as one yes in, in love and harmony and not to be judging or not what would you say having those differences up in front of mm -hmm. us and saying no not that person or not mm -hmm. that cause mm -hmm. you know yeah. so i i do believe we we can all work together and reach out in in love and harmony with each other and make this world like a little glimpse of heaven of what God has shown me. Mm -hmm. And I just can't wait for that to happen. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Thank you so, so much. You're welcome. And it's God so bless. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It's so special because if I see in your face, uh, it's the face is changing. It's very special. It's like I see two faces on you. I don't know why. <laughs> well, that could be my soul coming forward as I'm talking with you. Yeah, maybe. And you're being allowed to give a little little glimpse of yes. the human appearance within it. Mm. It's very special. I always look at it because it's, it's changing. I it's know crazy. people who tell me my eyes change color and everything when they're looking at me. Oh, okay. So, um, that is just God trying to to tell us, you know, please believe. I'm I'm a messenger. I'm giving oh, you yes. the message. You know? Oh yes. So keep up the good work and and all Thank your you. audience. Yes. For them to keep up the good work as well. 